Hello there. Welcome to this guide where we're going to talk about how you can handle sprint weekends from setup to quality to, well, the sprint itself and then the race. So keep, we're going to be doing this at the Qatar, the new track for this game. And we'll be doing the first practice manually because, well, that is the best way to make sure that you get a decent setup. It's also the best way for us to maximize track acclimatization before practice and after, sorry, not before practice, before quality. And after quality, we'll be trying to max it for the sprint itself. So we have figured out what a decent setup is here. This is a bit decent starting point. People have already figured that out. Now for your setups themselves, you can either you do them randomly, uh, make guesswork, or you can use cheat sheets to get a basic setup, which you then work out of, which is what I'm doing. You can use a calculator, which will give you possible setups, or you can even use a tool that someone has developed that gives you straight up, just gives you the setup for your driver. Uh, perfect setup for every track for, you know, to make things a little bit easier, but it's up to you how difficult you want to go. Now, I'm going to assume that most people, uh, particularly for the sprints, will be using at least a cheat sheet. So that is what I've done. We've got this setup for both cars. And the thing is here, unless you have a really, really good pit crew, you'll only have time to change your setup once during practice. So our first run here is going to be fairly simple. We're going to put on the softs. We're going to put in 20 laps worth of fuel. That should be enough to get a setup. And the reason why we're doing the sauce first is because then we can put our second stint, go out on the hards and build that track acclimatization because, well, track acclimatization builds quicker the longer you are out on the track, meaning that long stints are very effective at racing that. For your car knowledge, it's basically races over time. Uh, there's no real way to hurry this up other than just being on the track. And of course, the setup satisfaction is going to be an important factor as well. All three of these make up your driver preparation and your driver preparation equals your starting confidence. So with that out of the way, I think we're ready to just jump into practice here. And again, it's not really difficult. We just set up the car like we did, jump into practice, and then we just send our cars out. We have already set up the run plan and we are going to allow them to basically now just do their, we basically allow them to run now until they are finished gathering set of feedback. And once they have, I'll be back with you. Okay, so Ricciardo has now been running for almost 20 minutes. He has figured out his setup. What we're going to do is call him in. As you can see, he's gone about 10% uh, track preparation. So Noda is a little bit slow with his setup. So we'll wait for calling him in as well. Now, some of you might wonder why we're running damaged components. It's because the more damaged your component is, the lower the durability, the more performance it will lose. Now, performance doesn't really matter in quality. Why am I? Sorry. Performance doesn't really matter in practice. It matters a lot in quality. It does not matter in practice. So once the component starts getting into, at least it, as soon as it hits yellow, we kind of don't want to try and use it anymore. We want to try and relegate it to practice only use. And uh, that is what we've done here. So we're calling in Sunoda as well, but he'll probably end up, he actually made it into pit lane there perfectly. No, sorry, that was Rick. So Sunoda actually needs to do one more lap before he comes in. But in the meantime, we can set up Rick's car. And as you can see, we hit some pretty good numbers here, but as I said earlier, we do not know what is the optimal window here. Driver setup satisfaction is 89% for the setup. It's not great, but it's not terrible. We only have one chance at, uh, you know, kind of changing this to get the uh, setup for uh, the ra uh, not the race for quality done. So what we're going to do here is actually try and get to the kind of extremes here on both sides. And by doing so, we should be able to tell if the optimal where the optimal windows are because that's what we want to try and find here even if we don't get a great driver setup satisfaction before the qualification it's not a huge problem it's actually very manageable so again try and find the good window here on the second run for quality then you can tweak it for quality and then you can well you can tweak it before quality but you can't tweak it after that's why we want to try and find that window right here it's going to take us some time to do this uh, change in setup about five minutes and of course, as I said, we want to put him on the hard tires. And we'll just give him a run plan that's about 30 laps. That should keep him out for the rest of the session. And once Sonoda comes in, we're basically going to be doing the same to him. Reconfiguring his setup, giving him one that is uh, going to keep him out for, as I said, about 30 laps. And Sonoda here is actually pretty close to the same as uh, Rick. So we'll do the same here. Kind of force the sliders a little bit to their maximums. And we'll see if we can, maybe get a, you know, find a couple more optimals. 
which will make it easier to play with. We do not want to return to session, that is me being silly. We want to put 30 laps on, and we want to use that hard set for this uh, for this run in practice. We could use a medium set as well, but generally uh, I think using the hard set here probably is going to be better. Although, again, you probably should check that. We can confirm this. You probably should check that before the session in the reports here, circuit info. What can we expect in terms of compound performance? So medium's too hard. Medium's will be better for around 24 laps so we do not want to run hard unless we have to and the medium is a better tire so we'll keep that so running hard here is actually completely correct now what's going to happen next is incredibly simple we're just going to wait for this to finish reconfiguring and once they've finished reconfigured we're going to be sending the car out and we're going to allow the car to just well run do its own thing until the practice is over now there are two th more things you can do to help your components live longer and that is avoid high risk curbs it uh, lowers the powertrain wear and you can also drive in clean air it also lowers powertrain wear and temperature again we don't care about performance in practice so toggling both of these if you're doing practices manually is something you should do every time and for Sonoda too we're going to be sending him out he too does have both of those uh, toggled and we are going to allow both of them now to just finish this qualifying run. So I'll be back once it's over and we'll see where we're at for setups of qualifying. Practice is now finished and we can have a look at how we did. So we had a worse setup here for Sonoda. We had a better setup for Rick. We got about 43% track acceleration, which is not bad for just one practice. Again, we can only max this out at 100. Usually you have two practice, we only have two. So if we were to take manual control over that second practice uh, after quality, we could probably max this if we really wanted to. Now, as you can see, we have a starting confidence now for qualification and or qualifying. And we can actually change our setup. It's not going to change the uh, confidence, no 30. But we can now move these into better windows. We've had optimal here, we hit optimal here. We know that it's great there. We also know where most of our loss is, it's basically from the traction. So now we can try and set up in a way where we actually, you know, hit things. So this looks okay for him. It's not perfect by any means, but it should be good enough to get us into 95-ish around there. Now for Rick here, we see that that is only good. So we'll move that to the left and we'll go ahead and rebalance everything else as a result. This still look, this also kind of looks good. Shouldn't be a problem or too much of a problem. We could try something like this and that might be a tad better. So this is what we're going to go with Rick. It should be very okay. And again, this will be the setup for the race itself. After quality, we aren't actually allowed to change our pieces again. Well, change our setups other than the front wing, but front wing changes a lot of other things too. So we really don't want to do that. Since it's quality, we're going to be putting on our best uh, parts, of course and we're gonna power through it quickly. Now, for quality strategy, uh, we're gonna be doing two flying laps and no cooldown lap. The reason why we're doing this is because as you saw in quality, we were actually struggling with tire heat of all things. So the AI is bad at heating tires, particularly for qualifying in this game. So by doing two flying laps back to back, you can usually kind of mitigate that and generally have some good qualifying results as well. So we're gonna do qualifying like this, I'm gonna show you here. And we're just going to immediately send out both Rick and Sonoda. A little bit of a gap between them. And this first run isn't to set a good time. It's just to send them out there. Their goal is to build up their confidence, which is what I was talking about earlier. It's really easy to get higher in qualifying. So don't be worried if you do ball that first uh, practice, although we do need to find a good setup during set practice. So Sonoda here already is very high in confidence. Pretty much already hitting uh, peak. And Rick, same for him. Okay, so the we'll be getting both boys in and, box. and we'll be sending them box. out again immediately okay. for another run on those same old tires. And again, this is to ensure that we have peak confidence. We probably don't need to because we are pretty close to being safe. Well, we should be safe, but the other cars are also doing setting better results. So better safe than sorry, send them out again. We are going to get blocked every now and again, but the fact that we are going to be running two flying laps here do also give us some sort some security and you know reliability in terms of getting our laps done so with this i think that we should be through so well we we're not going to do another lap but if we went through what we would do is just do the same run strategy 
two runs, uh, no cooldown lap on a fresh set of tires. But we are probably safe here. So we're just gonna allow this quality to quickly run to its end. And I'll show you potentially here if, on this track if uh, doing this run plan is better or just, in, just doing this single run plan. We'll have a look in just a second. Because you can actually check how the lap times were in, well, basically once it's done, but you can also do it during, but we'll do it once it's done because we get a really nice data view here, which makes it a lot easier. So we're gonna go into lap history. We'll have a look at our laps. So in our case, it didn't actually improve things for uh, Danny Rick here. He had 26.9 on his first one, 27 on his second one. So in loose sail, we don't really need to do this strategy necessarily. The laps here are pretty equal, except for the second one was actually a bit slower. Uh, actually a bit slower, yeah. You can see about 500s. The second attempt here, it went a lot better, but I would assume he got blocked in sector one. And uh, that's why he didn't have too good results. Now, Sunoda here too, as you can see, it's virtually the same numbers in sector one. So for this track, you could do just a one lap uh, flyer. But again, for the sake of building confidence, you could send them out on either a two lap flyer or a three lap flyer in the beginning. And that should help you with just building that confidence. So we'll be doing this for the other, pra other qualifiers too. And basically we'll not be changing anything. We'll be doing one run to build confidence, two laps, and then we'll be doing two flyers with fresh tires to try and get through qualifying. I'm gonna do that quickly and we'll see where we actually end up for the race itself. Once quality is done, the next order of business is setting up for practice too. And once again, we are gonna be putting on the worst parts of the car. It's just uh, the best way of doing things for quality. Why am I saying quality? For practice, sorry about that again. And because of the fact that we did run uh, quality, which counts as a official ses session for Park Firm, we can't actually do any changes to the car setups. The only thing that we can change would be the front wing angle, but we have already hit a good setup here. And I don't think no matter which way we move this, it's going to have a positive effect. So we're just going to leave it as is. We hit 100% for Sunoda. So if I were to manually do this uh, practice, I would just send them out on longer runs, probably use a medium and one of our use softs. And that should do basically two different runs, one very short on the soft. We're gonna use the mediums for all their worth for this. And that would work, but we're just gonna sim it because it is just as quick. Should not be a problem. So let's get through it, simulate the session. And there we go. We are now ready for the race itself. And as you can see, because we simmed, we didn't really reach 100% track acclimatization. You could easily have done this if you manage it yourself, so that it would be one of the benefits. And that would also give you way more confidence for the sprint race, but as you can see, confidence does get a calculation before the quality. It gets another calculation after second practice. So you do have that first practice to really nail your setup. You can also change it before quality, but after that, you basically have to have it done. Now, once we're here again, we want to switch back to our good parts, because again, this is a race. Uh, you can freely change these parts, don't worry about that. It's uh, if we change to a different, uh, basically engine supply, we'd be in trouble. But since we can't do that, there's no problem to change out these parts for this. Also next up is of course making a strategy. It is a sprint, it's gonna be short. And as you can see here, softs is in theory three seconds quicker. But mediums here probably allow you to, as you can see, run a bit aggressive, even run attack and most parts without going too low below that 30% where you have a chance of getting a puncture. So we could probably run the entire race on the medium on aggressive, not really have any negative effects. Can't really do that on the softs here. So I'd say go on the mediums, it will give you more of an advantage. And again, this is something you need to have a look at before the race. You can also see that the race will have, unless we get a safety car, a red flag, 19 laps. So we can actually see here a comparison on how you can expect the compounds to behave. So in this case, the softs are about four tenths quicker than the mediums on average, but we'll be running, you know, aggressive. So over the full stint, we'll be quicker. Full stint in this case being 19 laps. However, if there are safety cars or virtual safety cars, the soft stick could really come out as a winner in terms of the tire, but we are going to go on the softs. Sorry, go on the mediums, what I'm even saying. And we're gonna be running them on aggressive for the entire race itself. And that should be okay. I actually need to click this button. Gonna be running them on attack. And for the start of the race, we are going to be pushing fuel. We're going to be pushing our pace mode. We're going to be pushing our ERS. 
because for the first two laps of any sprint or race, the AI will do the same thing. You could, of course, try and play it a little bit slower, a little bit more strategic, but we do need to heat up our tires, so there's no reason not to go attack until you reach correct tire temperature. Then we can turn it down to aggressive, and basically what we're going to do now is just get started with it. So we're going to start the sprint. The sprint. And we're ready as you can see here, everyone is better. on the uh, soft tires. And this is kind of interesting because it allows the fact that we are on the mediums gives us an opportunity here to push. The AI will not be very aggressive because, well, their tires can't handle it. And if we push them into making a mistake, we're actually going to be getting some pretty pretty good benefits. And already here, we have two cars out, Verstappen and, uh, Verstappen and Stroll. So that puts us up already. Beneficial, we can't really hope for that all the time. The danger there would have been a safety car. But again, for the first couple of laps here, we do want to keep on pushing. Uh, tires have now reached that temperature where we kind of start to see them cook. You can check that over here. Overheating would be, well, we're actually just lightly overheating them, so it's not too bad. We can actually go aggressive still. And the way that you judge if you can stay aggressive through the whole stint is actually incredibly simple. You put your tires on where they should be, in this case aggressive. And you see if it follows this line. If it follows this line, you'll be quicker than, say, running standard. If it drops below that line, that usually means you're overheating your tires to the point where you're losing a lot of performance. So, technically, okay, keep it down your battery. technically we are overheating tires. Technically, we have run out of ERS as well. But if we have a quick look here, it says that we're losing tire performance. But as I said, in reality, we aren't losing. We aren't really losing tire performance until the degradation drops below the aggressive use line. So this is perfectly fine. Again, the Alpha Tauri that we're using for this uh, guide is actually the, well, third, not third even, fifth best car on the grid. So this is actually what we didn't want, a virtual safety car. This benefits all of the soft runners, of course and puts us in a kind of a worse position here but we're still looking good but that's mainly due to the two cars crashing out so yeah this uh this is not good for us but it will allow us to push our tires more aggressively towards the end we don't really want to go super aggressive attack before we need to because tired uh, tire degradation is still a thing and generally now under safety car and virtual safety cars you can just leave these as they are and your drive will usually handle them very well now, I would advise putting it on ERS Battle Assist. Uh, basically, what it does is that you, the AI will choose themselves, well, your drivers in this case, will choose themselves when to use energy to defend and attack. And it looks like sometimes they will even recharge the battery when they feel like they can. So it's a bit of an interesting one, but I would recommend to just toggle it on. It, uh, it might save you a little bit of heartache in the long run. We're currently on lap seven. We're getting closer here. But again, sprint strategy is literally just that. How well can you manage one set of tires? We do have a little bit more to go on, but so does everyone else. And again, we don't really need to do anything too aggressive until we get to the end of the stint. The last few laps is when we will potentially hold a bit of an advantage over the rest of the grid. So you know that is falling a bit down here, as you see, but that is, uh, that is fine. Nothing we really can do with that right now because of the virtual safety car. The AI has extra fuel. They're pushing, that, they're pushing themselves as well. So again, not much we can do about that. We are within range though of both Russell and Perez. So it's still looking fairly good for us. Now, what, how you play the game is up to you, but generally eight times might be too much for some. Uh, four times is usually a very comfortable experience. You can even watch it from first person if you want to. And again, that is down to personal preference. Uh, don't let anyone bully you into doing something that you don't enjoy. But again, this guide is mainly just on how to get through the sprint and well, we're getting very close to the end here. Now, we need to keep an eye on basically fuel. It's a bit more important during sprints. And now we are getting to the point here where we can consider doing a little bit more attack. But what we're actually going to do is wait for probably two more laps. For three laps to go, we're going to be trying to get Tsunoda up to probably seventh potentially. And we'll be trying to get Rick up into fourth. Again, we are kind of biding our time here because we want to use that remaining uh, remaining tire wear that we have to attack. And as you can see here, we currently have about, we've currently spent about 42%, but I'd say we probably were down a bit lower if it wasn't for the fact that we have that safety car. We are now getting close to that limit where we wanted to start attacking. So that's what we're gonna do. 
We're going to put both of them on attack and we're going to deploy ERS. Deploying ERS is a good way here to get overtakes done. And immediately we have Tsunoda jumping up two places, we have Rick jumping up a place. And although it might be a tad bit too early to start aggressively attacking, we are getting the job done. And once we get the job done here for Tsunoda in particular, we can probably tune him down a bit. Don't really overcook his tires. And for Sun Rick here, and Tsunoda for that matter, we do need to try and keep a little bit of battery towards the end of this race. So for him, we're going to go top up. He's still going to be fighting Paris. Paris is in a qu much quicker Red Bull, so he's not going to have a good time in that fight. But we did get the strategy done here. Basically, start on a tire where you can be a bit, little bit more aggressive, have a little bit more fight, so to speak, and you will be you will benefit from that. Now, top up is a really good new mode they've added where you charge ten, well a tenth of what you do with well a fifth really what you do with harvest, but it does allow you to reliably harvest without really you know losing everything and that is very very beneficial we're on the last lap here so we can turn to another back up and for rick we do actually have a little bit of fuel here that we can help with pushing with because paris is actually aggressively attacking us now he's coming back at us for Sunoda here he could potentially also have caught russell if we have been a little bit more aggressive as you can see so it's a bit of a shame there but because we were kind of uh a little bit passive there. We could have actually gotten Russell as well. But uh, this is very much an acceptable way of doing the sprints. We're going to be starting fourth and seventh in the race. And again here, for the sprints, don't be afraid to choose aggressive strategies. It usually does pay off quite well. So go through the strategy view, have a bit of a look there on what you can expect. And make decisions from there. For the sprint week itself, uh, just a quick summary here, I'd recommend doing P1 yourself. Make sure that you put on your worst components. Make sure that you do one stint on the soft to start with to get that first setup. Do the, try and find the, again, the perfect zones on that second run in P, P1. Once you do get to quality, do again, Reevaluate the setup, try and get into as many perfect zones as you can, do your quality, and after that you kind of locked into whatever setup you got. If you want to maximize track acclimatization, you can do the second practice yourself, but it's perfectly fine to sim it. Just make sure you switch parts out again. And once you get to the uh, sprint race itself, don't be afraid to choose aggressive strategies, as I said. Belgium in particular, you can do this also very eff effectively. Lucille, as you can see, is definitely good for this. We did a pretty good job here, I dare say. So you have options. Don't be afraid to test new things out. Aggressive strategy is actually highly rewarded in this game. So uh, yeah, feel free to ask any questions in the comments. Please like and subscribe as it helped me out a ton. And I'll see you around next time. Hopefully this has helped you a little bit with uh, strategies for the sprint weekends. And as I said, the only thing that's left is a race and you do them as any normal race. So I think you can handle that part. But yeah, thank you for watching. Hope to see you next time. Bye bye.